This lesson is a variable speed version of the Pong program from the previous lesson. That is, it's pretty much the same program, but this one contains some new variables that make it a simple matter to change the speed of the bouncing ball. Three values can be adjusted in the Pong program that affect the speed. The number of milliseconds the program pauses in the run loop determines the amount of time the program waits before it moves the ball again. If the sleep number is shorter, the ball moves faster, but a short sleep time causes more CPU cycles to be used up and can bog down the system. If the sleep time is long enough, it becomes possible to see the ball jump because it's moving too slowly to fool the eye. Now this version of Pong checks to see if any arguments were specified on the command line. If there were, and there were exactly three of them, the three character strings are converted to integers and stored in these three variables. All three of them have a default value. The variable named pause is the number of milliseconds the program will sleep between frames. It defaults to 33. The variable named horizontal is the number of pixels the ball will move horizontally in each frame, and vertical is the number of pixels the ball will move vertically in each frame. The integer class has a static method that reads a character string and converts the numbers it finds into an int value. This is done inside a try block because it could be that the string it's trying to convert is something other than the number, and if so, an exception is thrown. Anyway, these three lines of code convert the string form of the numbers on the command line into integers so that they can be used in the program. Now this is a very simple form of command line processing. To run the program and specify the values, you must specify exactly three of them and they must be in the correct order. Normally you do some stuff here to make it a bit more flexible, but this is a demo program, so I'm trying to keep the interface code simple. If you've done much programming, you know that the biological interface is one of the most difficult to handle. Humans are very unpredictable and data coming from them can bring constant surprises. The three values are passed to the constructor of the class. The constructor receives the values and then passes them on to the constructor of the Pong Canvas 2 class. And that's where they're needed. We had to pass them through here just to get them there. These new variables have been added and will be used in the code to set the time and motion amounts. Notice the use of the this keyword. The arguments passed to the constructor have the same name as the variables declared in the class. Inside the constructor, then, it's necessary to specify which name is being referred to. Any name declared inside a method will hide the declaration of the same name outside the method, but you can specify that you're referring to the external one by using this dot as a prefix. With these three statements, the arguments passed to the constructor are copied into the variables of the object. The keyword this still has the same meaning as it did before. It always is a reference to the current object. It's just being used in a different way this time. In this version of the program, the variable named pause is used to specify the number of milliseconds to sleep. And there's one other change to the program. Instead of using x++ plus plus to increment the value, we now use x plus equals horizontal to increment it. This sort of construction may be new to you in the middle of an expression like this. All of the assignment operators can be used inside an expression, and the value stored in the item on the left is the value that results from that sub-expression. For example, in this line of code, if the value of x is 100 and the value of horizontal is 2, the result is 102 and stored in x. And that is also the value of the sub-expression. That is, the number 102 is added to the diameter to be compared against the width. This could have been written in more than one line of code and easier to read. I usually write it that way myself, but I wanted to show you this particular construction because you will come across it from time to time. In fact, I use it some, and you may see it again in a future example. Anyway, 
These lines of code adjust the values of X and Y. The amounts of the adjustments is determined by the values of horizontal and vertical. They move the ball to its next position. The rest of the program is just like the previous example, so let's compile it and run it. If no values are specified on the command line, the program uses the default values and runs just like it did before. But let's try some other values. This is what happens with a sleep time of 30 milliseconds and the ball moving at 10 pixels horizontally and vertically with each frame. It's certainly faster than it was. Here you can get a better idea of its motion, but let's try something asymmetric. Here the sleep time is 25 milliseconds. The ball only moves one pixel left and right, and each time it moves 25 pixels up and down. Compile and run this program for yourself and try some different combinations.